about 12 hours. I think it's time to um, test out this coffee. This stuff. Now, typically at this time of night, it's approximately 9.30. I would be able to drink some coffee and have no problem sleeping because I have a very high tolerance to caffeine. But here's the test. We're gonna see if this stuff is as caffeinated as they say. If I can't drink it and sleep, then we'll know something's up. <laughs> um, probably not the most scientific test. Probably not the best idea ever. But, that's what we're gonna do. There is, however, one problem I've been encountering with making cold brew the last couple of weeks. I don't have any freaking ice cube trays. <laughs> And yeah, sure, you can mix up the coffee and not use ice, but there's something weird about it. So I went and bought an ice cube tray. It's one of the, uh, it's probably one of the strangest ones I've encountered. It has like a flap on it and you're supposed to seal a thing and then hold it upside down and do all this other stuff. But anyways, it's in the freezer now. I'm not sure how long it takes to make ice. We're gonna, we're gonna mix this up about that much concentrate is good for this hour of the night. Actually, let me test just the concentrate first. Yeah, that's strong. Or at least it has a very dark, um, overpowering flavor. I might be in love. Good thing I've got another box of this stuff. And a wee bit of this agave in the raw. By the way, See how this is almost empty? I've had this for seven months. That's how long it takes me to go through one of these. Don't use very much sugar. Now we top it off with water. This is not Perrier. For some reason you're watching this without the sound on, it's gonna look very strange. I'm gonna check the status of the ice cubes though. We're gonna sidetrack here for just a minute so I can show you the strangeness that is this ice cube tray. It has a flap. Which I uh, don't quite understand. I don't know what my deal is, but drinking coffee without ice just, uh, I don't know, there's something wrong with it. Well, at least cold brew. Maybe I should just buy another ice maker. When I left that last apartment, I sold it. Oh, look at that, we got one that's frozen. Okay, enough of that. I still don't understand what the purpose of this thing is, but maybe someone can explain it to me. Now, that's actually what I imagine cold brew should be like. And I'm probably gonna mix it up stronger next time. So you know how like, um, you can get dark chocolate or baker's chocolate and there's no sugar in it and it's just this overpowering like, chocolate weirdness. That's what's going on here, but it's coffee. Um, yeah. That's the stuff. <laughs> um, cool. Well, thank you for sending me this. Um, I still have that other five pound bag. It's in a box under the sink, but yeah, I still have the other five pound bag of Casa del Sol or whatever it was. Translate Casa del Sol to English. Casa del Sol in English is Casa del Sol. <laughs> okay. All right, um, we're gonna pick this up in the morning. I'm probably not gonna drink all this right now because it is very strong, but also very good. I'll probably give it to about Eh, maybe about here before I get to bed. Although it's never as good the next day. Eh, we'll figure something out. All 
right, so doing a little bit of testing here on the bounder, and uh, I think I solved that front caster for a clanging sound. I, uh, just for testing purposes, I loosened up the springs, and I cut a little piece of thin cardboard from a priority mail envelope and slid it in there. So, as you can probably see here, we've got the little piece of cardboard sticking out, and I just kind of fastened it with some hot glue for now, just, uh, just for testing purposes. But, yeah, loosening up the springs just a tiny bit and then sliding that cardboard in there has gotten rid of that sound. And now I can run around and hit bumps and it doesn't make that horrific noise. Before, every single one of the cracks on this sidewalk would uh, make a noise. Yeah. Looks like we got a little string of hot glue here. <laughs> But yeah. So the plan is now I'm gonna get some slightly longer bolts and uh, loosen up the tension on those springs a little bit more. Cause right now I've got the jam nuts, they're only halfway engaged, which isn't really a good long-term solution. Um, also I'm gonna cut some little pieces of rubber that will fit in there and go around those bolts. And I think we should be good to go. We'll have a little bit better suspension, a little softer ride, because the front tires are solid. They're not air-filled and also we'll be getting rid of that noise. So yeah, sweet. Okay, I do believe it's officially time to do something about the carpet in this van. Oh, that's where that went. <laughs> it's a rat. So as you can see, it's pretty much shredded and um, kind of slide around on it quite a bit so I think we're just gonna pull this section out of here for now and then I thought about doing AstroTurf or something in here but um, I don't know I'm fairly certain this won't require any special tools to do yeah gross Oh, I forgot I had screwed it down over there though. Um, I'm gonna go grab the vacuum cleaner and the cordless drill and a knife, I think. Yeah, gross. All right, I think we're pretty much done with the carpet removal. I got it all bagged up and thrown away. But as you can see here, it looks like the floor is in fact green. I don't know if that's steel or aluminum. I guess we could check with this magnet. Oh, that is in fact steel. No wonder this van weighs so much. Um, all right, cool. I left the front half of the carpet in there for now. Uh, I mean, it's pretty crummy, but not as bad as it was back here. So. This is a nice little square. I'm gonna see if I can figure out what to put on there for now. All right, well, it is a tiny bit more noisy in here without the carpet, but to be honest, I think I almost like not having carpet back there at all. So I don't know. I mean, I might replace the carpet with something. The front's gonna need to be changed at some point, but I think for now it's actually okay-ish, maybe. Um, this one even has a uh, removable remote. Can you can you imagine running around with this thing? It even has a light that you can turn on on the front. Um, I think we should probably uh, test this thing out.
Now this particular model does not have a flip out screen. It just has a color viewfinder, but you can remove this little eyepiece and then you have a little screen right there. So when you turn the thing on, you can kind of see in this little screen what's going on. So if I take this light off and flip this thing around backwards, that zoomed way in. I can kind of see myself in that little viewfinder upside down. So let's, um, let's see here. Oh, and it's got the, uh, the red light on the front there. Oh yeah, this is gonna be an interesting thing. Now, it does have digital electronic stabilization, so I don't know how good that actually is, but um, <laughs> this is gonna make for a great vlog. <laughs> Old school. I've got three batteries for this. They don't seem to be especially good, but I find these things at Goodwill quite often. And uh, they're sealed lead acid. Oh, these are NICADs. Never mind. I thought they were sealed lead acid. Yeah. Um, there's a refresh mode on the charger. I guess I could try a few cycles. But actually, if they're NICADs, you know, they're sonically welded together. Well, I can cut these open and replace the NICAD cells in there and probably make my own battery packs that will work. But um, <laughs> I don't know why. I just like this old school stuff. I mean, these things with this color LCD viewfinder. I mean, these things are like $750 when they were new. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you get this giant camera bag and everything, but I think it should be entertaining to uh, do another Potato Vision vlog. Oh my gosh, best Goodwill find ever. So I actually cut it out of the last video, but I've got a uh, VHS camcorder that I wanna do another vlog with just, um, sort of Potato Vision 2.0, but I found this thing at Goodwill. This is a VCR with a built-in TV. And the best part is you can use camcorder batteries to power this thing. Um, it's also got an old standard def TV tuner in it, which obviously everything's switched over to HD now, so I won't be able to pick up any TV channels, but it's got uh, RTA ins and outs. And uh, yeah, basically a full functioning VCR with a little flat screen on it. I have no idea if it works. I suppose it could be repaired. Well, let me grab an actual 12 volt power adapter and see if we can power this thing up. All right, got a 12 volt power adapter here. Come to think of it, um, the batteries for the camera operate on like eight or nine volts and this thing operates on 12. So it could very well be, uh, they modified the batteries to differentiate between the voltage. Hey, we got a power light. Hey, static. Let's see if the VCR opens. Hey, hey. Volume down. I don't even want to know how much this thing cost when it was new. I think this is one of those multi-hundreds of dollars uh, things. I don't know if there's a date on here. Uh, ooh, October 1999. So that was definitely back in the day when color LCD screens were insanely expensive. Let me look through this box over here real quick. I, uh, I think I have those VHS tapes here. Let's put in this random Portland um, Newcomer's Guide to the Rose City. Really strange looking VHS cassette. Hey, it works. Parade is the second march in the country, right behind Wow. The air show at the Hillsborough Airport. I guess you, uh, 
I guess you can't adjust the brightness or anything on the screen. But yeah, that's kind of a random thing, right? Just a, a portable VCR. Uh. I think I'm going to copy this tape over to DVD just because it's uh, fairly old and it might be interesting to see what, uh, how things were not uh, a few years ago. Actually, what year was this? Uh, so there's no dates anywhere on this thing. Huh, well, I'm going to grab the um, VCR DVD recorder. Oh, actually, it's right over here. I think I was talking about this thing in a previous video a while back. I was copying some old uh, VHSC camcorder tapes over to DVD. But um, I found this thing, even got the remote for it, so it should be easy to use. But I'm gonna go hook this thing up. Actually, I think I need to go get some DVDs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't have any blank DVDs. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna hook this thing up over there. How does it connect? I guess with component cables. Anyways, I'm gonna hook this up. I'm gonna grab some blank DVDs, get this copied over, and then uh, we should have some interesting commentary on this, I'm pretty sure, and I'll play a few clips. It is four flat. That's kind of weird. It should be 4x3 aspect ratio. I think it's... There we go. It was zoomed in. Wow, this is amazing. In theory, all I have to do is press this button. Excellent. And apparently there's blank space at the beginning of the tape. Um, kind of have an issue. So I'm trying to copy this, um, uh, there we go, now you can see. So I'm trying to copy this VHS movie to DVD using this machine here, but somehow this remote control, the EEPROM and it got erased. I thought at first the remote was broken. It had some batteries in there that corroded, so I took it apart, cleaned it up. There's only three component, three, there's only three components inside this remote. There's a logic chip, a capacitor, and a little diode thing. They all look fine. I checked all the solder joints, everything looks good in there, but it just wasn't working. So I grabbed my cell phone, and cell phone cameras can actually see infrared light. So I put some batteries in this, pointed the cell phone camera at it, and hit, hit the button, which actually I guess this camera should be able to pick it up too, come to think of it, maybe. Actually, I'm not sure if DSLRs will pick it up or not. Let's see. Okay, so I guess this camera can't pick it up, but... All right, hang on a second. I'm not sure why I feel the need to prove that I'm not a crazy person, because we all know that I am a crazy person, but... So you put your camera in photo mode, point the remote at it, and then... Uh, maybe it did quit working. Well, that's weird. Well, anyways. When I checked it the other day, it was actually transmitting. But, it wasn't transmitting the proper signals to that thing for it to pick up. I downloaded, I've got an old uh, HTC One M7 cell phone. These are the old school ones with the forward-facing forward speakers. Uh, but the power button is an IR blaster on this phone. So I downloaded a remote control program for that, and some of the functions on it would work when I hit the buttons, but this thing, I think somehow the EEPROM got erased, so it's not working. But that's an Acurion or Acreon or whatever, it's some Radio Shack brand from 2006. This remote does not exist. There are no codes to operate this thing. You can't buy them used. Uh, 
And the problem is, I used the dubbing button and copied the VHS tape over to the DVD, but you have to finalize the disc before you can play it on anything else. And the idea was to stick it in the computer here, and then I can rip the files from the DVD, and then boom, we have VHS to computer. Easy. But this isn't working. So I've got a DVD in there that has the stuff copied onto it, but I can't finalize it because you have to have the remote. Um, no, I have another one of those VCR to DVD burners. I haven't seen it in about three years. I know it's in one of the storage units. It's the one storage unit where there's a lot of stuff in the back that kind of got buried. So, unfortunately, you guys are not going to be able to enjoy the Welcome to Portland um, video tour just yet. I'll probably get that sorted out here, hopefully in the next few days, maybe. Sorry, you can't watch that VHS tape until later. Um, technology from 2006. And that brings me to my last thing I wanted to say. So this is that Death Wish coffee. Very good flavor. But I just realized, I drank probably about half of this today and then I refilled it. I got about this far into it. I got that weird caffeine like buzz where you feel a little bit disconnected from reality. So this stuff does in fact have a lot of caffeine. It's very good, but you're gonna wanna drink it in moderation. That's definitely for sure. Um, but yes, thank you for sending it. It will get used. I just, I won't mix it up quite as strong because I think when I refilled this, I put a little bit too much concentrate in there and it, it's hurting my brain. <laughs> um, anyways, I, uh, I went out to storage today and helped out a friend. Actually, he was giving me a wheelchair lift from that bus and we were uninstalling it, but it got a little bit rainy while we were there uh, and this chair I'm sitting in is soaked. So I'm gonna sit here next to the fire. Actually, that thing should light here any moment. But anyways, wait for it, here we go. There we go. So I figured sitting out here in front of the fire would get this chair dried out a little bit. I got moisture inside the joystick again. I know the sandwich bag trick is probably a thing, but I don't know, I don't. I, I probably should do something, but I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um, I haven't gotten stranded yet. Famous last words.